Hello and welcome to Live at Epifan. Uh, this is episode 36. It is Thursday afternoon, uh, so we are here to talk about something to do with streaming. Uh, we have some interesting stuff that I think you might be able to guess by the array of things we have uh, along our desk here. Um, so stick around and we will uh, talk about some interesting things. So, uh, what do we have? So today we're going to be talking about PTZ cameras. What are they? What's the differences between them? And how will they affect your everyday setup? Or why would they be beneficial? In the meantime, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want to let us know during the show or later on, you can leave them. Leave us a comment at, you know, live at epifan.com for an email address, or you can leave a comment, obviously, in the Facebook or YouTube side. Yeah, I was just making sure I get those chats open and running. So Excellent. if you guys have any questions, I am monitoring that. So throw them in there. Um, so today's topic is all about PTZ cameras, uh, or, uh, or PTZ for the other Canadians maybe watching. We're, we're Canadians, uh, right? So we're <laughs> going to do this about us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I always say PTZ. Um, but what are they? Why would you use them? Different types, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we have an array here that we'll, we'll kind of go through each one and look at those. Um, and, and the biggest one is why you might choose a PTZ camera. Um, so, a little bit of news first, though. Right, so Photo Joseph, and I believe it is on December 7th, if I remember correctly, will be going through a beginner to pros uh, live stream talking about a whole range of different topics, why you want to get a live stream, and how it might benefit you depending on your, your constraints. Yeah, he's going to have a lot of stuff, including using Pearl with some uh, Panasonic cameras, and I think he's doing that in, uh, in conjunction with BNH Photo, so that's going to be super cool. Looking forward to actually seeing that. It's yep. going to be pretty good. Um, so as we go along, and as Matt mentioned earlier, make sure that uh, you put any questions uh, in the chats. Uh, I suspect we're probably going to have a small audience today, as it is uh, Thanksgiving uh, in this U.S. So um, happy Thanksgiving to any Americans that are watching, but hopefully you're eating turkey instead. Um, True. <laughs> now some of you guys might actually ask what is PTZ stand for? So point, tilt, and zoom. Yeah, the pen, the tilt, the zoom. Basically it does this. <laughs> um, and this, so you know, it's it's an interesting, it's an interesting proposition because a lot of people look at these cameras, um, and Epifan sells one, this one right here, the the Lumio, um, but there are a lot of manufacturers out there, and they all have slightly different characteristics and, and options, and, and so which one suits you? You know, you really have to look at the specs, and and we'll talk about those. Uh, but I think one of the uh, big things is. Why use this? Like, why wouldn't I just use a camcorder on a tripod? Well, I think realistically you'd want to use it when you have a, a fixed position, right? If, if a tripod somewhere, let's say in an aisle, may not be a, a perfect solution, but it might need to be somewhere mounted to, let's say, a ceiling or a wall. Something that's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, that's not going to get bumped or, right. or, or, or obstructed by some reason. So maybe a little bit more permanent, fixed position, but I still need to be able to do this. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, a lot of people tend to use, um, well, at least that I've seen in my everyday life, tend to use them for, let's say, security, right? If it's just something yeah. that's around your home or whether it's in front of a building or just with inside some sort of office space, I see a lot of it being used in that direction. However, I mean, I've seen them in conferences as well. Yeah, so the ones we have here, this sample, definitely are geared more towards, you know, meeting rooms, lecture capture, uh, you know, things like that, where the venue is a permanent fixture, it doesn't really change a lot, uh, but at the same time, tripods are going to be in the way, so putting it on a wall bracket or on a ceiling or, right. or whatever you might have, um, you know, but it's never going to move, but you still need to be able to adjust it, um, as, as we were talking about. So, um, I guess, well, let, let's break some of these down. So, so the Lumio that we sell um, is... As quick specs, it uh, it has a 12 times optical zoom. It has, honestly, a very nice sensor that can work well in low light and, and lots of other scenarios. Right. It obviously has the pan, the tilt, the zoom. It has a DVI output, which can be adapted to HDMI, with just a simple adapter, and a 3G SDI output, as well as it has RS-232 control. Right. So... It offers a pretty good mix of different options. So if you need to mount it way in the back of a hall and run it to your other AV equipment, SDI will give you huge cable runs and you can run SDI 300 meters if you want. Um, so that gives you a lot of flexibility in positioning. So that's, that's a good mix, but what if you needed something else, right? Then, then there's another model, maybe another mix of things. So this guy here is USB 3 only. So this, and I think the same could be true with PTZ cameras in general, 
could be described as a webcam on steroids, right? Because <laughs> yep. it has better optics than a webcam. It has a real optical zoom, not just some digital cropping fake zoom like uh, like many webcams have. And of course, obviously, you can remotely control it and position it. But it works just like a webcam over USB to plug into your computer. Uh, I was playing with it on a Webcaster X2 the other day. Um, you know, it's self-powered, so you don't have to worry about, you know, the power draw from a small device. It's sure. nice. Um, and then it kind of goes on. So what does this guy have? So as far as I know, I think this one has the added benefit instead of having, let's say, like a 12 times optical mm -hmm. zoom, this one has 20. So if you've got an extra okay. distance to cover, you're really gonna have uh, like a, an easier time getting to where you need to go. Right. Now, one of the other differences, and of course we'll show you guys that with the Lumio camera we have behind us uh, momentarily, this one has an SDI output as well as an HDMI native input. So this one kind of gives you this little added benefit that right. you know, rather than having to adapt a DVI port to anything else, um, you've got it straight. HDMI through See, this one also has audio jacks on it. Yeah. So now we're not talking pro line level, like we're talking a 3.5 millimeter adapted audio port, stuff. right? So right. But that's probably why it also has HDMI, is that you're going to be able to get audio from that. Now it looks like this one also has an Ethernet jack on it, so it looks like it might likely has IP support as well. So in another scenario, maybe totally different room where SDI is not going to give you length, looking at a PTZ camera that offers IP camera support could give you a whole other mix of possibilities for distance over Ethernet or adding it to a security camera system, Absolutely. a CCTV and TV system. Um, or adding, adding it as a source on Perl. Right, with RTSP streaming. So that's, that's another common option. And then the last guy is a slight variant. Yeah, now if I recall correctly, this one here is, yeah, this one's also a 12 times optical zoom, so you get a little bit less distance, but you do get the added Ethernet port for IP camera use. It has a native DVI port and SDI port, but it also does look from here that it has an analog audio input right. at 3.5 mil. But it looks like it doesn't have, so this one has the audio loop through on it, which is kind of cool. That one doesn't. So, like I was saying, there's a there's a mix, right? There's a There's a big... You know, both of these don't have any audio support at all. <laughs> uh, these two do, but it's slightly different ways. Um, uh, three of these cameras, not including the uh, USB camera on steroids, have RS-232 outputs or pass-throughs, which is kind of right. nice, which allows you to do things like daisy chain specific right. cameras so that you can either do control all of them simultaneously or independently from one another right. from either a Visca or a Pelco controller. Right. So Lisa, maybe we'll switch to our picture in picture here um, and we'll just turn ever so slightly to the side here and we'll take a look at the back of some of these. So we're looking at that first uh, black one here. Um, so as we were saying, it has the Ethernet, has the DVI, the SDI, uh, that audio jack, and then those are the serial RS-232 ports. Now that is common on all of these. Not all of them have an in and an out. Uh, the, the webcam one doesn't. So what we can do with that is even better control. So I'm actually going to use the remote from Illumio just to sort of pan between these different cameras. Um, I'll re-aim that a little bit here. Uh, but you could do the same type of control as I'm doing with just this IR remote using RS-232 and a joystick style controller. Right. Using, as you mentioned, Visca or Pelco standard. Um, so that, with the ones that have the pass-through, um, and we've, we've done this with the Lumios, you could chain four or five of them in series and control them all from one station with a joystick controller. Absolutely. They all have their own addressable IDs, so you could say camera one through five or whatever and make adjustments to them from one control station so you don't have like five remotes or, I mean, this these remotes have presets for four cameras, but in any case, that's the other advantage. If you were taking your camcorder or DSLR and throwing it on a tripod, um, what are you gonna do remotely with that, right? Like you have to have, it it's essentially puts you in a position where you get a static shot or you man the camera to move it. Right. The beauty of PTZ is that you can do that remotely, whether it's from a remote control or those serial interfaces. So again, that fixed position, maybe on the ceiling, maybe <laughs> way in the back, if you need to change it, uh, you know, that, that, that ability is there. Now we do also talk about, we do this question from time to time, unfortunately the Lumio camera doesn't have it built in, um, but we always get uh, conversations for automatic tracking. 
Right. So some of the uh, the higher or different higher end PCDZ cameras, some of the more expensive ones may have either it's uh, like a like small tracker of some sort that you yeah. can just put on a speaker at the front of the stage, and as the speaker walks from one side to the other, suddenly you'll find that camera will just start moving yeah. on its own. So none of these have auto tracking uh, options built into them, but those cameras do exist. I've seen them with um, audio where they they look and try and lock onto the person who's speaking. Um, I find those ones don't work that great, but yeah, the tag ones, they work pretty well. Uh, there's some that just do like your facial recognition kind of things and like, there's a human face and you want to track that one. Or like, general they, motion detection. Yeah, yeah, and they're gonna try and follow that. So that's another advantage, right, is you can get a little bit of that automated stuff. So maybe we'll go back to that picture in Picture Lisa and we'll, we'll look at um, this other one here. This is the silver one more in the middle. And as we were saying, it's got that ethernet, the HDMI, the SDI. There's our audio in and out, um, and then the serial. Uh, the next one, this is our, our literal webcam on steroids. It has the RS-232 for remote control, but no pass-through. So you're not gonna chain this together with anything. Right. Um, so it's a much more minimal camera, and then the USB 3.0 out, and that's it. Very, very basic. Um, so that one could be great for someone who needs a webcam with a little better optics and the control to, to man, man, move it around more remotely. Right, so, so if you're like a vlogger options. or something, you do a lot from, from your computer desk live, whether it's uh, interactive with, let's say, uh, video processing, whether it's Adobe Premiere, yeah. or so some gamers tend to use cameras that have pan tilt zoom options as needed, um, the USB on steroids would be a pretty yeah. good solution. And then finally, but certainly not least, uh, our own Lumio. Again, it has the DVI, the SDI. It actually has composite video, but no one would really want to use that these days <laughs> um, because it would be terrible in comparison to a digital signal. Um, and then, of course, the, the RS-232 pass-throughs. So these guys represent a good cross-section of common ones. Um, the, the common theme here is that they're all fairly similar, you know, We've chosen the Lumio uh, based on specs that we wanted to represent a good middle ground between um, optical quality, zoom distance, control level outputs as a great pairing for something like Pearl um, at, at a decent price. Right. Some of these others, especially when you're looking at ones that have IP and stuff built into them, they're nice, but it, the, those additional features really jack up the price. So speaking of price, I'm not going to give people exact pricing here, but I often get comments when people look at something like a PTZ camera, they say, oh man, that, that's really expensive. I'm not so sure that that's true when you consider what you're getting out of it. Well, RS-232, so you get the Visca Pelka control, so you can control it from different systems. Some have auto tracking features, which in itself would mean you don't have to have someone manning the camera. Right. You've got different digital and sometimes audio, and even in our Lumio case, composite, so analog yeah. uh, video output settings. Uh, with some cameras, such as our Lumio, having the ability to change even the signal type. Right. You start adding up a lot of different features you wouldn't find in a standard, over-the-counter, consumer-level camera. Exactly. Like, Lumio can do 1080p 60, right? I mean, that's that's pretty good. It, it operates in a lot of conditions, obviously. The remote controllability is great. If I compare that to a DSLR, um, you know, it the DSLR is not much less expensive, but isn't going to offer the remote control ability, the PTZ, all those sorts of things. So it, it really, you know, in a lot of ways, it is a good value to look at a PTZ camera if your needs are that fixed position, not changing a lot, not necessarily portable, they could. They are a little more awkward to, to move around compared to a tiny little handy cam. But, right. um, you know, fixed position, even in, in a music venue, you know, in, in your local pub, if they wanted to live stream the band that's playing that week, you could put in two or three of these cameras and, and you know. Especially if you wanted something like a really fun fixed shot of like an overhead of a drummer or something. Will you have a mount for the ceiling and just point it straight down? Exactly. So I, I think um, you do have to look at what your needs are, what signal type you need, what you're going to be doing with that. Uh, but uh, PTZ cameras can be extremely flexible, um, extremely powerful tool in, in a larger piece. Um, and definitely just looking at, at what those those needs are and what you might need. Um, so some of the ones we've mentioned there, you know, things like lecture capture, meeting rooms in corporate environments, um, you know, we use those pretty heavily. Um, what are some of other other places that you might see a PTZ camera? Um, 
A fun one that actually I saw a little while ago would have been uh, food trucks. Uh, also, okay. like landmark locations, I find a lot. So, for right. example, if you're, let's say, Times Square, that would be a great place to have a PTZ camera, right? right. It's a large venue with lots of people. You could easily slap a camera somewhere on high on a wall or up on a ceiling or off, off some sort of prop and have the ability to look around a room and see what happens. Uh, for example, it's not uncommon in New York City to see flash mobs, right? So you got suddenly you've got this giant choreography of dance and people. Maybe people want to check that out. But, you know, in order to see the entire venue, you may need to look from left to right. Or a food truck. Obviously, you know, you can see what's going on inside the truck itself. It can go yeah. from one end of the truck to the other, also being able to see customers or, or, or anyone along the way. Yeah. No, I, I think that, um, you know, we use them quite a lot, obviously, for our own corporate needs, but obviously we sell one. As, and so uh, I think another place um, that we've been seeing a lot of things is in larger churches, house of worship scenarios, where they want they have a very large space that they need to cover. Um, and, and so you know, two or three PTZ cameras mounted around a room, again, wall brackets or, or wherever, whatever they might need, running SDI signals to a central switcher or, or, or distribution point means that they can get all of that content very easily uh, and, and not have to rely on a single camera and get the flexibility of that movement, right? right. Um, but, of course, so you may not have the budget to be able to get in multiple PTZ cameras, which is why the PTZ camera becomes so paramount. Right. Fix it in one location. You have, let's say, three podiums on that stage or, exactly. or in that area. Just move it back and forth. <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah. Predefined locations. Switch, well, switch, yeah. switch. And no. I guess we didn't mention that earlier. You can actually set presets on most PTZ camera remote controls for position A versus position B so that you can just say preset one and it'll zoom and lock to whatever preset you created. Position two, it'll do that again. So you don't always have to manually do it like I was earlier. Um, so that can make it smoother, faster, and, and easier for someone to just punch some preset positions to, to quickly move and lock in. Right. Um, so yeah, there's, um, yeah. So I think that summarizes it. If you guys have any questions, please put them into chat. Um, taking a look, there's, uh, there's not a lot in there right now, but like I said, I, uh, I suspect that a lot of people are, are having a turkey day today in the, in the U.S., so I uh, wasn't expecting a lot of people today. <laughs> um, so hopefully, for those of you who are watching, I hope you uh, answered uh, or got some questions answered. If you do have any others, please send us an email live at epifan.com. We'd be happy to answer those. The specifications for Epifan's Lumio camera is on our website, of course. Um, and if you have any questions about that, jump on, uh, on the live chat on our website. And uh, there's a good chance either Matt or myself may answer that live chat and be able to help you out. Um, so I think that pretty much covers it. What do we have next week? Next week, I guess we may be back here. Uh, we're talking about support desk Q&A, so popular questions that we would normally get in support, things that might help you guys uh, going forward if maybe you haven't thought of the question, might be important to your, your future setup or your current setup that you have already. So the FAQ. All the FAQ. Well, that would be an interesting one for you guys. Please submit any questions you might have. Uh, we're going to obviously generate some of our own, but if you guys have any questions you would like us to answer that have been bugging you, um, send us an email, uh, live at epifan.com, or put it in the comments, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that. But if you like and what we're doing, give us a like on Facebook, subscribe to our channel, uh, subscribe to us, send us an email, whatever you might need. But in the meantime, have a great Thanksgiving out in the U.S., and the rest of you guys out there, enjoy. Thanks very much.